Welcome to the Medical Association of Georgia's award-winning top doc show. With more than 8,000 members who care for patients in every specialty and practice setting, MAG is the leading voice for physicians in Georgia. Go to mag.org to join MAG if you're a physician in Georgia. And thanks to Alliant Health Solutions for its support as a sponsor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of MAG's Top Docs Show. Uh, I'm your host and MAG CEO, Donald Pomisano. Today's show is going to address the Georgia Campaign for Adolescent Power and Potential. Our first guest is GCAP's uh, President and CEO, uh, Ronald McNeil. Um, and our second guest is Dr. Shelley Francis, who is GCAP's uh, Vice President of Programs and Training. So welcome and thank you both for joining us today. Thank you so much, Donald, for the invitation. Uh, we're so glad to be here to talk about uh, GCAP and our work in adolescent health. Well, good. Well, let's get started. What, yeah. what is GCAP's mission? So GCAP's mission is to improve the overall health of, and well-being of young people in our state to ensure a more powerful future uh, for us all. Uh, GCAP is focused on empowering young people to make healthy choices um, and to maximize their potential uh, so that they can make informed decisions about their, their health as well as uh, their wellness, whether it's physical, mental, social, emotional. Um, our approach really looks at the whole child um, and ensuring that teens and young adults have the opportunity um, to make healthy decisions. Well, that's fantastic. And, and, and kind of give the audience some idea about your programs and does it work with both young men and women? Yeah. So we, we certainly uh, serve uh, all young people uh, across the state as relates uh, to our programs um, and again we are laser focused on adolescents and so when we say adolescents we're typically talking about young people ages uh, 10 to 19 uh, and what we do is essentially ensure uh, that those young people have information medically accurate information um, and that they have access to that information so that it informs their decision um, about their health as, as well as their overall well-being uh, we ensure that we are always looking at the emerging issues uh, related to adolescent health, and we do that work through five focus areas, okay. uh, youth empowerment, uh, as well as parent engagement. Uh, the lion's share of our work happens in two areas, comprehensive sex education and teen pregnancy prevention. Right. Um, and then lastly, we focus on physical activity uh, and nutrition. Uh, and so all of that work uh, essentially we are able to reach currently on an annual basis 60,000 young people um, and counting. Uh, our strategic wow. goal um, for our current uh, uh, impact goal was to reach 150,000 young people by the end of 2020 okay. uh, and we exceeded that goal um, one year in advance. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. So, so we're really excited um, and think we have the right approach to engage with local communities um, locally at at the regional level as well as the state level uh, to expand services and to bring greater awareness and understanding around the importance of adolescent health. Okay, okay. And so I understand you have physical activity and nutrition programs. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? A little bit, a little bit more in depth? Yeah. Sure. So around our physical activity and nutrition work, we work with K through five elementary schools that are typically residing in food deserts. And so what our purpose is really is to expose the children as well as the students and their parents to healthy eating, to best practices around um, nutrition and physical activity. So we infuse those best practices by utilizing a garden-centered approach. So we show young people where food comes from, how it actually impacts their growth and development, and why it's important to try different things. And the children get to actually taste different foods, so they actually plant their own vegetables, they watch them grow, and right. then they harvest them at the end of the growing cycle. And then usually there's a big community event where we do the harvest, food tasting, uh, simple inexpensive recipes for the kids to do with their parents. So we really try to have a comprehensive approach and make nutrition and physical activity fun and really just part of their normal life and their development. You know, I think that's wonderful because I think a lot of people don't realize that the food deserts are not only in outside of metro areas, but also 
within metro areas yeah. that you can go into many neighborhoods and 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 there is no grocery store mm -hmm. it's usually a convenience store mm -hmm. you yeah. know which is usually high sugar right. yeah. uh, soft drinks um, you know cupcakes things yeah, like so that carb and, foods exactly yeah. exactly and then yeah. on the physical activity front um, I know that the state itself, I know uh, there's been a Representative Demetrius Douglas mm -hmm. has for the last few years pushed to have more education mm -hmm. um, in the school systems because it seems like somehow over, you know, since when I was a kid, we've kind of gotten away from, from you know, a lot of PE in, in school. And, yeah. and so right. it's been great to see that movement as well. Yeah. yeah. And once, once we, you know, interact, begin those partnerships with schools, they really buy into like the kids just love being able to go out and, and be in the dirt. Because intrinsically, right. I think kids like to be outside and they yeah. want to play. And so we really make it fun and bring the education and awareness to a level that they can really process and they get it. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, so can you tell me about how you use technology to, uh, to reach your target audiences? Yeah, so technology is a, a huge part of how we uh, in, expand our reach uh, across the state um, through two mechanisms. One is um, Youth Focus. Uh, it's our TMI Georgia app, and TMI stands for exactly what you think it stands <laughs> right, for. Right, right. Uh, and it's a, an app that is essentially focused on adolescent sexual health, um, and it's giving young people uh, and access to information in real time about adolescent sexual health, reproductive health, and also making them aware of services um, that are right there within their local communities um, so that they are able to access medical services and healthcare services related um, to those issues. We also uh, have uh, medical experts, healthcare experts uh, available in real time. Um, there's a chat feature and right. so young people can ask, um, you know, small or, you know, easy and as well as common complex questions uh, where they're able to have a medical professional um, speak directly to um, their issues uh, as well as their need. Uh, through our parent engagement uh, initiatives in 2017, GCAP launched um, a parent portal called Parents SOS. Uh, and so essentially parents are able to go to this website and find out tips and best practices about well, number one, how to develop a healthy relationship uh, with their teens and young adults. Um, that they're raising uh, because sometimes it's challenging to have those difficult conversations. Right. So giving them talking points, uh, giving them uh, videos and information on how to talk about sex education, talk about uh, other issues related to substance abuse prevention, mental health, uh, whatever the, the topics or issues are, there's something there on that website for parents to glean from. Right. Um, and it really empowers parents and gives them the confidence they need um, to have what is sometimes, again, those difficult conversations with their team. Well, I can tell you yesterday I was going through the website and I did see the SOS and I uh, watched one of the videos on uh, addiction and depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was fantastic, especially as a parent to, to four kids. It really helped me have a better understanding and, and, and just to have, it, it's a great resource. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I really like and other parents have really emphasized how much they appreciate it is that the infra information is organized in a way where it's age appropriate. So at every age and stage right. of adolescent development, there's guidance on here's some potential conversations and tips that you may want to start brokering with your young person. Mm -hmm. So you're not starting with the heavy topics first, but you're right. really just starting to develop that relationship and that rhythm of of communicating with your child so that you're really serving as that expert because kids ultimately want to have those conversations with their right. parents. They really don't want to go to somebody else. Right. They want those conversations to start at home. And so what we're trying to do is really arm parents so that they feel empowered and knowledgeable mm -hmm. and ready to have those conversations with their children. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we know is that parents, yeah. uh, through surveys and, and uh, conversations that we have with parents, parents are still um, the number one uh, go-to resource resource um, right. for, for their children. Um, so many times we think there's all the external um, you know, influences, but right. parents really can uh, influence how their teens uh, navigate the process and the nuances of peer pressure right. um, and all in the developmental stages that they are in. Uh, and it, again, uh, speaks to their health um, and the decisions that they're making related to their health. Okay. So, so how can G 
GCAP um, also help reduce teen pregnancy in Georgia because we obviously yeah. have, a, have a big yes, problem. Yeah. yeah. So uh, teen pregnancy pre- prevention was really the start of GCAP uh, back in 1995. Five, the mission at that time was to essentially eliminate the teen birth rate uh, wow. in our state. Um, over the course of the last 25 years, um, GCAP has been at the, on the front line uh, in partnership with school districts, with community-based organizations, with grassroots advocates. Um, essentially ensuring that there are services, there are training, there are programs that really speak to the need of preventing pregnancies. And since that time, uh, the, the teen birth rate has decreased by more than 70 percent. Oh, wow. Um, so we are really excited yeah. about the progress um, that was made. And, and GCAP, we feel that we certainly played a major part right. in that work. Uh, right now, we are the only organization in the state that has a specific focus on comprehensive sex education as well as teen pregnancy prevention Um, and we believe that essentially one of the best ways to prevent pregnancy um, among teens is ensure that they have medically accurate information related to sexual health Um, and we think that expansion of that information through partnerships with schools um, has really helped um, in the progress that we made. Right. But that's a fantastic stat. I mean especially with the decrease and all because and that's the mission. Yes. Right. I mean that's mm-hmm. so so obviously uh, sexually transmitted diseases, uh, chlamydia, gonorrhea are on the rise. Um, what what are you doing to address it? Mm-hmm. So what we're doing to address those rising ties of STIs yeah. is really work with yeah. communities. So you know sometimes organizations come into communities and they are like I'm the expert you got to do what we tell you to do right. so we don't take that approach at all it's really more of a holistic partnership with communities so what we do is we have listening tours and okay. we take the show on the road so to speak and we do these listening tours and community conversations all around the state and so what we really try to do is hone in on what are the contexts environmental social familial contexts that are happening in these different communities okay. And we show what the data looks like for the different health outcomes, whether it's nutrition and physical activity, but specifically to your question, we hone in on the sexually transmitted infections. And so then we talk about best practices and strategies that we can utilize to try to reduce the disease. And part of that strategy involves uh, sex education. And sexual health education is just a normal part of our educational cycle. So we want young people to make sure that they have the right information we want parents to have the right information right. so they can reinforce lessons at home because parents are the ones who set values. We don't try to instill any values yeah, right. into the work that we do, but we really try to show communities how we can utilize information, research, and put that into practice by doing sex ed and implementing okay. it as part of the total right. educational you know, structure. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. And it, it is H- obviously, Atlanta is known... Um, has, it's been in the news about HIV, right. uh, especially in Georgia. And is HIV a problem uh, with the adolescent community as well? Mm-hmm. And what are y'all doing to, to address yeah. that? So, so essentially, as the STIs and HIV right. are going hand in hand, unfortunately. Okay. And so, the whole mission and focus of our work is really to address all of those issues, as well as abstinence, as well as knowledge and behavior and practices. So, really, that whole approach that we use is working to address all of those issues and not just solely focus on one or the other, but it really needs to be comprehensive and address all of those issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so are there any other big health care problems that you're seeing with adolescents today mm-hmm. that are kind of taking center stage? Yeah, you know, I think uh, young people are, are certainly, there's an epidemic around substance abuse um, okay. issues uh, among right. adolescents and young adults. Um, I also think when you look at mental health, um, particularly mm-hmm. um, anxiety and, and depression, um, you know, right now Georgia has a very high uh, teen suicide rate right. uh, because of some of the mental health issues that young people are, are trying to battle with and there is a lack of resources as well right. as sometimes information and quite frankly capacity um, is certainly an issue particularly within the school setting or within the higher ed setting. Uh, there's just not enough services sometimes to go around as relates particularly to substance abuse uh, issues as well as mental health. Um, so um, how young people navigate those things um, is always right. complex. Uh, that's why GCAB also 
also looks at ways to empower young people, particularly um, young adults that are on college campuses, um, right. so that they are able to have peer-to-peer -peer interaction and educate one each other. So um, a couple of years ago, we started the Youth Advisory Council right. um, that's made up of high school and college students. And essentially, we uh, expose them to the evidence-based curriculums and trainings that we offer um, through our organization. And then they're able to take that information into their high school and to their college campus. They host community events and uh, convenings uh, to talk about those emerging issues um, and also recognizing that they're not alone right. in those situations. Right. I think a lot of times young people feel like I'm the only person that's dealing with this. But when you give them an environment where they're able to come together and share peer-to-peer, -peer, share their successes, but also share their challenges uh, related to health decisions, uh, it right. can be a very powerful um, tool uh, and resource for them. Right. Well, it's it's that's you know it's scary that that suicide rates are on the rise. It's scary that you know we we've got to do more here in Georgia to to address mental health. Yeah. And I think that's you know where we see healthcare going is we've got to address more of those issues because mm -hmm. if not. Then you know it, it's 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 a, it, it's it's just a shame of what what's happening out there. Yeah. And so, so obviously, physician organization. So how do you how do you uh, interact with physicians? Yeah, we have uh, a couple of physicians that serve on our board of directors as well as our advisory council, um, and so they are definitely helping us to help to helping to inform our work um, and the things that we need to be thinking about from a healthcare uh, standpoint as well as a medical uh, standpoint. Um, we also uh, partner with uh, entities like uh, Emory and the Morehouse School of Medicine um, to help uh, inform our work as well and look at ways that we can expand our reach um, to reach young, more young people, particularly uh, college students, um, who in many cases are some of the most exposed mm -hmm. um, uh, population to many of these issues related to adolescent sexual health. Um, I think the, the number one thing that physicians can do is to uh, uh, utilize the resources and information that GCAP has and make them available uh, to their patients uh, because there's a lot of user-friendly information that I think supplements the things that doctors and physicians uh, share with their patients around how to protect themselves from STIs, how to prevent pregnancy. Uh, and so those, re those resources essentially can be taken uh, you know, away and with them into their homes uh, and hopefully be utilized in a way that has an impact. Yeah, and, and, and all those those resources we'll put on our, our uh, in the notes section okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. of the podcast because they're, they're great resources. They are. Uh, we've and it's, sorry, to add, just a, one yeah. thing I to add was that we've also had good working relationships with the Georgia American Academy of Pediatrics yeah. Yeah. as well as the American College of Obstetricians and uh, Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Absolutely. And so we've gone to their annual meetings and presented, and as well as shared information about our TMI Georgia app and some of the other resources and services that we offer. For young people as well as their parents. Do, do you also interact mm -hmm. with other healthcare professionals, psychologists, oh, absolutely. Uh, social yeah. workers, nurses, yeah. social workers, guidance counselors? And so uh, we have some really good partnerships with all of those organizations. Are there any kind of key messages you want to share with them uh, mm -hmm. and, and the physicians as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think the, the key message is that everyone has a role. Um, in, in helping to prevent uh, these issues. Um, GCAP is really focused on uh, engaging the entire ecosystem. So whether it's the healthcare um, sector, whether it's business sector, government, schools, um, uh, politicians, it's, it's all of us play a role in local communities as well as on the statewide level to figure out what are the things right. that young people need access to, what is the information that they need access to in order to make those healthy decisions because it, it essentially puts our future on a trajectory and moving right. in the right direction. Um, I mean, as we know, the adolescents, teens, young adults, they are next in line. Right. Uh, and so we all have to do our part um, to ensure that they have the best opportunity to make good right. decisions around their overall health. Right. Well, good. And then do you have any advice for young people or their parents? Oh, sure. So starting with the parents, be a good listener yeah. and develop a relationship with your child. Not just, just don't try to be their friend, but really try to be their 
sounding board, they're confident, they're cheerleader. Develop those relationships when they're small so that they can carry you through those really difficult and challenging years once they hit, once they hit right. adolescence. But definitely arm yourself as a parent and be a resource because, like I said before and that we've echoed, that young people really want to go to their parents and their family members. They're trusted. Right. Those trusted adults mm -hmm. to help get, guide them and help them navigate those difficult decisions and relationships. In terms of young people, you're not alone out there. There are people that care right. about you. There's people out there that can give you resources to get medically accurate information, age appropriate information. So don't feel like you're isolated and you're siloed. So yeah. please reach out to right. your parent. If you can't reach out to your parent, reach out to a trusted adult, adult or somebody who is a has created a safe space for you either at school or in some other aftercare setting. Right. And I think that's a, that's a great message because too many times kids do feel isolated mm -hmm. yeah. especially if they're depressed or something right, exactly. happened yeah. they don't know who they can talk to and they don't realize that they're not the only one in the world that that has felt this right. way and mm -hmm. and it's best to if you can just talk to someone yeah exactly. that may alleviate some of the issues I think it's uh, I think it's helpful when uh, we as adults kind of think about uh, you know not too long ago we right, were right. in their shoes you know we were teens uh, we were young adults trying to figure it all out um, you know I often say you know during those years as a teenager um, sometimes you're just one decision away from uh, doing something that can put you on uh, the trajectory of having right. a very successful adult life but you're also one decision away from doing something that could totally change everything about how your adult life looks and can have a negative impact. Right. Um, and so I think helping young people uh, make those decisions, connecting with them, meeting them where they are, um, and having open dialogue, transparent conversations in a non-judgmental way, um, I think is really important, particularly uh, at this time, because with technology, things are moving so fast for young people. Right, right. Um, um, and there's a lot, there's so much fluidity in all the issues uh, that they're facing. Uh, and so it's important that uh, as adults and as professionals and experts in this space, um, that we uh, make ourselves flexible <laughs> in, in many right. ways um, to be able to address those needs um, and respond to them uh, quickly. Um, I also think it's also important that we look at ways to ensure that our strategies and our approaches are culturally uh, responsive. Uh, because the young people from different different backgrounds from different right. demographics um, their their lived experience looks right. very different child to child and so it's not always a one size fits right. all I think that's why it's important in our work at GCAP when we go into communities we meet communities where they are we we recognize um, the issues that they're specifically facing uh, and try to help them through the through the process of uh, addressing those issues and those needs specific to their community. Right, right. Well, what about, uh, we talked a little bit about measures of success, yeah. and we talked about reducing teen pregnancy. Are there other measures for success that you use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. So, um, because we know that uh, the curriculums uh, that we offer are research, mm -hmm. um, that they are, they are proven to impact um, not only the health outcome results, but also change it, it creates change in behavior, change in attitudes. Um, the way we re measure success, uh, first and foremost, is through our reach. Okay. Um, so we are constantly looking at ways, how can we expand our reach? How can we move uh, into uh, new communities? Right now, we have 22 priority counties um, that we're focusing on um, and how we can essentially uh, provide uh, services and programs and trainings and initiatives in all five focus areas in those right. communities as needed. Um, so reach is certainly uh, a part of our goal. You know, as we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, we also, uh, our board of directors just started a process on uh, Friday um, to really start looking at our strategic direction for the next five years. And one thing that definitely came out of that uh, was that we need to continue to expand our reach. We need to 
to reach more young people, reach more parents, um, and, and look at innovative ways uh, to do so, whether it's through um, our in-person trainings, whether it's through webinars or the use of TMI app or our parent right. portal. Uh, we want to ensure that more young people, more uh, parents, more trusted adults have this information and they know how to utilize it in a way that improves health outcomes for teens. So mentioning that it's your 25th anniversary coming up, congratulations. Thank you. But um, can we expect to hear any big news in the future? Yeah, um, a, a lot of big things are coming up. Again, we're building our, our next strategic plan. Uh, we plan to host a visioning day uh, okay. where we plan to sh share that plan with many of our partners and right. stakeholders okay. um, so that they can have insight and perspective on the direction that the organization is moving as it relates to our five focus areas um, and looking at, again, how we can engage the entire ecosystem in the process right. um, and have that buy-in um, from local communities. Uh, we are also uh, really excited. Every year we host um, the Empower Party um, okay. in the fall, and that is our largest fundraising gala and uh, event. Okay. Our founder, uh, Jane Fonda, uh, comes into town and, and brings okay. many of her celebrity friends um, to be a part of that event, but it's a really an opportunity, uh, one night where uh, yeah. the community really comes together to support our work. Um, we're going to be hosting multiple community conversations, so we're still on the road all over right. the state, again, oh, discussing that, yeah. the emerging issues um, that adolescents are facing. Yeah. Um, and then our Youth Empowerment Summit, um, yeah. we will host that in the fall as well, where we bring together over 500 uh, young people um, to really uh, give them a platform to right. discuss those emerging issues, but also to begin to develop in, in their own way solutions um, to the, for themselves as well as their right. peers. Well, that's 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 a lot. Yeah, and, it is. And, and, and travel the state, I get it. We travel, you know, the state yeah. all over the place. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I know all the good places to eat in just about every county. That's right. <laughs> Healthy places, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Combination of both. Yeah. 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 When you're on the road that much, you're like, well, right. hey. Yeah. 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 So, so how do you expect to see the uh, GCAPS programs evolve mm -hmm. uh, over the next five years? Yeah, you know, I, right now we have a, a menu, um, and Shelly and I were just looking at this, over 13 uh, programs and initiatives in yeah. our five focus areas. So the organization has definitely evolved. It's definitely grown. Uh, I think we will continue um, to look at the five focus areas that we currently have. Um, again, teen pregnancy prevention and comprehensive sex education, because of the statistics and the alarming issues that we know our state is facing, we have to continue that work. Um, and so it's really going to be about scaling up. Right. Um, and having deeper impact, providing gr uh, more resources, um, diversifying our resources so that, again, so that they're culturally responsive. Um, you know, and then we're always uh, looking at more evidence based curriculums okay. um, that we are able to gain through our national partners um, to ensure that that information is available to school districts as well as um, community based organizations, particularly community based organizations that serve young people during the out of school school time right, right. hours. Um, we know sometimes those are the most critical hours for young people. So ensuring that Boys and Girls Clubs and YMCAs and, and other after school programs have access um, to our information and training as well. Okay. So um, can you suggest any good resources for people that they can go and look at? Obviously your website. Yes, yes. indeed. indeed. The TMI Georgia app, which is in the Google Store as well as the okay. uh, Apple Store. So they can download that for free. Okay. Soon they'll be able able to download the parent toolkit that'll be on the GCAT parent portal area as well so there'll be a wealth of additional resources right. for them to utilize well excellent mm -hmm. and then obviously we'll, we'll link to all this on our website as well okay. so uh, so in wrapping it up yeah. any final thoughts yeah I would I would like to say um, again we want to thank the Medical Association of Georgia for this opportunity to share information about GCAP uh, with all of your listeners as well as your members um, I encourage um, all of them to become members of an initiative that we call power society mm -hmm. um, it is an opportunity to be uh, advocates for adolescent health and support um, our work uh, with financial resources um, and every okay. gift matters and counts 
months. Right. Um, and the Power Society, they host events and convenings throughout the year, uh, again, to keep creating greater awareness in, around the importance of adolescent health and the work that we must do in local communities. Right. So all that information about Power Society uh, can be found on our website. All right. Yeah, and I would just add that uh, to all the partners who are working with youth development or mm -hmm. with adolescents, to just to, to take a little time to reflect and think about how they can holistically and authentically engage with adolescents and young people yeah. to really make sure that their voice is integrated into the programming and the offerings. Because okay. that really makes a difference having the youth voice and not just the adults deciding right. what the youth need. Right. Well, thank you. I thank want to thank you, you for your much. time. I want to thank both of you because this was fantastic. And, and we'll link to all of this because it's such an important topic especially with youth and especially for those of us as parents always trying to figure out uh, how to talk to your kids and be available for them absolutely right. so absolutely. thank you so from everybody at mag uh thank you for watching and we look forward to the next uh, show thank, thank you. you thank you have a great day